so like i said this entire thing this entire the card thing is actually just one component although i've not been able to like really structure my um organize the file but then you can see here this is the component that i am using to create all the card um, interaction so i have set this particular card to transition from this one to this one uh, so yeah let me check there's a pretty step yeah so on hover there's while hovering this card should change to this card but um to make it change like seamlessly for, for it to have like this seamless effect where it just like comes in from here and this so one zooms in like to just make it like really look smooth and good you have to like have all the cards all the ele card elements properly arranged in each other in what's called the before and the after state so all these elements you see here now this ahmed has on this person's name are all here it's just that here it's kind of hidden outside of the frame so let me see if i can turn off clip content and also turn off uh clip content for this one so you can see they're actually kind of hidden here but um you can see i'm just going to just show how i actually do all this um, stuff it's just masking tricks and and uh, what's it called masking tricks so i'm just going to do that in a second so without much ado let's get to work i'm creating a new file so keep in mind i'm going to be sharing the file I'm going to be sharing um, what's it called sharing the file. I will share the, all the files to my tutorial. So in case you find on Twitter on my page that you need the access to the file, just check the comment section. You can actually find yeah. um the yeah comment section. I think this one is on the comment, it's in the uh description. So you can see links to Figma file. You can only see uh, even the fonts I use, I always like leave them there. So this one is not going to be any different. I'm going to leave the link to the file in the comment section of this video. I'm going to upload the video let's say tomorrow or thereabout. So let's just get started by creating a new file. New file in Figma, new file in Figma. So yeah, new design file. Okay, let's name it for the sake of, it's because I'm going to share, so I'm just going to name it. Typically, I, I normally don't name my files all my layers. So yeah, what's the name of file? Design session, let's call it. New design session. Okay, cool. So I also prefer working in light mode, E4, E4. Yeah, so, so everyone can see what I'm doing. So yeah uh the next thing i want to do is to add a frame so add a frame typically i normally go for the desktop um, uh 1440 by 10 with four frame so i've just added that but personally something i like as a matter of personal preference i like my frames being like a 16 by 9 aspect ratio I say this in all my design sessions if you watch all of them or if you've been part of them before i personally prefer the 16 by 9 aspect ratio because it looks really good and for wide screen and again typically if i were to like even use this thing in mockups maybe like in a desktop mockup a, desk, a laptop mockup 16 by 9 is like the standard is like the not standard per se but like it's the most common um, what's it called the most common uh, uh, aspect ratio found on white screens on pc screens so i just prefer going for that one so what to do that all i just do is just like in, re reduce the height here because the width is 1440 so i'm just going to reduce the height to 810 to make it sit on the 16 by 9 aspect ratio so what i mean is that if i were to lock the constraint properties now and shrink the height to 9 9 you're going to see that the width is going to drop to 16. So this 16 by 9 is like base aspect ratio and it was just scaled up from that to uh, multi-code 1440 by 810. So because I've done this like a couple of times, which is why I'm familiar with the what's it called the value. So yeah, that's just by the wayside. So without much ado, let's actually get to the actual tutorial itself. So the key things to keep in mind here. Uh, sorry. It was one of our key things to keep in mind here. The key elements here is actually this card. Every other thing is just like what's it called supporting elements. So I'm, we, I think let's get started creating the um, layout first, the layout, uh, the structure of the design first, and then before we now get to the cards, the animating the cards themselves. So yeah, let's see. Okay, yeah. So the first thing I want to do is just like um, create. I think personally, I don't like. Um, I do not like having to create a nav bars from scratch again. I already have like nav bars. Like if you even look at this one the nav bars here they are not related to this particular design it's just like navbars have been seen over the, over time so i don't think it's like really a really key element so let's just copy the one from the other designs and paste it here to v paste it here so uh the one thing one thing to keep in mind is that the nav bars like have a what's it called have a internal padding the padding the padding or margin i think padding is the right one so padding or margin or margin of um 40 so 40 pixels because every other element is just going to have that 40 pixels padding every other element in design has a 40 pixels padding so i just want to um, have that in my navbar so if i was working with like a different pattern just come here click on it totally out just click on hold alternate click on it and then i can increase the padding to let's say 80 or 120 as the case may be so that's just by the way but then 40 is just what i'm going to be using for this particular one so yeah that's that and then the next thing is just going to have the, the central area 
for my uh, images. So for the images, I also want to like make it touch because actually there's a padding, there's a top and bottom padding on my in my navbar. So top and bottom. So there's this padding of 2020. I think I might reduce it to something, but let's just say that 2020. So uh, that's one. I want to have my key. Uh, okay, let I me mean, let's express it in. Yes. Yeah, so I want to have my images here. My image. This is just going to be my central area of my image, and then the bottom part of my text. So let me just start creating the bottom text first. So what I want to do is just grab my text tool, click on T here, or press T on keyboard, and just type. Let's type gallery. You can type anything really, but mine. I think from the idea is just to like have the page name at the bottom here, and then navigations like related navigations here. So let's type gallery, and then the font I'm going to be using or the type 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 typography I'm going to be using type typography font whichever one so I'm, I'm going to be using lib libre sorry i can't really pronounce it libre l-i-b-r-e libre or libra libre libra castlon condensed so it's like this really cool font that was recently released like it was the high point it was released on um, twitter and all of that so i'm just going to copy the link to the file so it's a free font it's actually a free open source so, so let me just copy the link to the file it's, a, it's found on github okay so copy the link to the file so you can just click on the click on any of the names here and press download i don't know how to personally i don't know how to download everything i want so you can just click on the end of the link click on any of the what's it called file uh, any of the uh, font widths so you have to click on them individually i don't know if there's a way to select everything and just like download everything at once but i'm not using github as a designer so i think something is something i need to improve upon so just click on any of the font widths and press this button here there's a download button here just download raw file it's just going to download into your pc so you have to do the same for all the other uh, once you call for all the other weights before you can now install all of them as, as like one it's just going to install under one family so that's just by the way so, so let me copy the link link to the file and paste it in chat so you can get, get access to it so yeah that's that's the font uh libre pass sorry libre castlon yeah so i'm just going to change the name so libre castlon condensed Condensed because typically Figma already has that uh, once you call Libre Castlon, Libre um, Bascaville, Libre whatever, whatever. But then I want this particular one, Castlon Condensed. So I'm just going to select that one. Then I'm going to increase the size. Let me see what size I'm using here so I can be on track. So 96. So 96 is the font size I'm using. So 96. Just to make it like really, I like, carry some call your attention to this bottom section. So I think I even like this, like, I like this uh, particular uh regular one but for the sake of uh for the sake of the design i just made i'm just going to switch to italics for some reason italics just looks more just looks just looks more interesting visually interesting i guess it's 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 up to for debate but yeah i'm going to switch it up at um, what's called to italic and also one thing i think people, people don't really pay attention to most of the time is like letter spacing in what's it called in typography letter spacing and also line height so these are things that can actually like improve the readability of your that can improve or um, what's it called even worsen the readability of your uh what's it called typography and also make it look better make it look better visually better so you can't really tell but then i'm just going to like minus for the for any font that's like really big i tend to like minus minus two percent from the line sp or letter spacing rather just to like make the font tighter mm -hmm. just make it like reduce the space in between the letters and it just looks better to me not all fonts. No, I don't need to do for all particular all, all fonts. For example, um, I think Morganite. Morganite already has like a tight letter spacing, so I don't really need to do, do for that kind, that kind of font. But for this particular, one, I want to remove for general fonts mostly. I tend to remove minus two percent if it's a big, if it's anything bigger than a, what, let's say uh, forty or twenty something. Twenty something. I just tend to like minus minus two from the letter spacing, and also for the line height. I don't think I'm going to be tampering with this one because it's just one line. I, it's a display font. It's a display font size. So I, don't, I don't really want to minus touch that touch that particular one. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go to this um, because typically fonts like what's it called typography type in any uh, software normally carry like this um, uh, x height. I think it's called x height or something like. There's just, just there's just this, like extra spacing around the text um, area that this top extra space and this bottom extra space. Meanwhile, the actual typography typography. Is actually just confined to this particular area where the uh, glyphs are but then this extra space just to allow for like what's it called if you were to like be typing like a second line and everything so that's just by the that's something to keep in mind but then since this font is meant to just be one a one line thing i want to trim all these and uh, what's it called letters i actually want the uh, what's it called the uh 
uh, text box to fit the text perfectly well. So what I can just do in Figma is just to come here and then go to this option, vertical trim, vertical trim, then select this one, cap height to baseline. Typically by default, it's on the standard by default. And then if you go here, it's just going to trim all the extra spaces. So that's just something I personally like doing for fonts, for display fonts. Fonts are really big. That's what I call display fonts. So that's just by the wayside. So once that is done, I want to now create what's it called. I want to now create the other elements here. That's the, uh, these arrow, arrow buttons, these arrow buttons here. I'm going to create them. So let's get to that. So just to do that, I'm just going to just, just uh, get icons. So search for um, lucid icons here yeah, l-u-c-i-d lucid icons and then i'm going to search for arrow so arrow arrow so i'm going to select this particular one this left and right this left rather right say so, yeah right and i'm also going to select the left as well okay so once that is done the next thing i want to do is just like what's it called uh i want to select both of them because typically um lucid icons the weight is always like two. And personally, I don't like actually the weight here. See the see the what's called strict weight here. It's two by default. Personally, I prefer it being one point five. Typically, in fact, I think most designers I know always use one point five for their what's it called for their stroke for the stroke of their what's it called of their icon. So personally, I like I just think it looks better when it's one point five. So one point five for the stroke weight. This is just something I can apply to other designs as well, not just this particular design. So one point five for the stroke weight. And the next thing I also want to do is select all of them and also like I think the the uh, I think the uh, this thing is okay. So one thing you also want to keep in mind is that don't take don't take icons out of their out of their frames. Icons typically come in a frame, so there's this like invisible frame around it. So typically always keep icons in a frame. So that's something else to do. So the next thing I want to do now is actually like create that circle or the circle around them. So to do that, I want to just um, uh, I prefer using auto layouts. You can actually do it anyway, but then I prefer using auto layouts. So how I'll do it is just to right click or click with both fingers if you're using a Mac and then frame selection. So frame it again and then auto layout it. So I framed it. It's now going to, let me just call this one circle, we'll call it circle. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to now press auto layout, press plus on the auto layout button or press shift A to auto layout it. Then the next thing I want to do now is to now set the what's it called height to so let's say I think 56 was what I used. And then the width to six as well, and then I want to centralize it in the auto layout um, settings here, align center, so the arrow moves to the center. And then I want to round. Okay, let me round the corner. Let me actually add a stroke first. Stroke of black. I want to reduce the stroke. Opac sorry, stroke color. Let's see black first, so we can actually see what we're doing. So I want to want to go to the corner radius and then just increase to one or to just number nine 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 something something like that. So that's what you see. So you have a rounded um, what's it called circle. You have the uh, what's called the icon arrow right inside of a circle, so that's what you want to do. So have this, and then personally, I don't think I want to do this. I, I want to use this one again. I just want to delete this, and then duplicate this one and press uh, what's it called Shift H. That's Shift horizontal. Shift horizontal means I want to called flip horizontally. So it's just going to flip the flip the item the other way, like horizontally. So that's just one. You can press Shift H again. It's going to align properly. So that's just one thing by the way. One thing to keep in mind. So yeah, that's um that's for that so uh the next thing you want to do is just like um what's it called group them not group them please don't group things except in very key um, very unique scenarios that's when i actually use groups typically i use auto layouts or frames for my to to bunch items together so that's one thing so you just want to group select both of them and then shift a let's auto layout them again auto layouts so press plus, plus, plus here and then you have this so i'm just going to call them arrows so the only reason I'm actually naming this file is because I'm actually streaming this typically I will not actually name my layers, but yeah. So arrows, we call them arrows, and I'm just going to copy the arrows and click on this design and paste it here and then move it downwards here. So once I have this done, I can now what you call I can now select the gallery and then select the text. This is what's called arrow keys and shift A. Or press this button here, auto layout here to auto layout them together. So the spacing you also have between them is you want to set the spacing to uh, what do you call it auto. So you can just come here and type space, press space like space on your keyboard. So you're just going to set them to auto. So auto means they should just be like uh, like they should be distributed distributed them um, uh, equally inside of that particular frame that they are in. So you don't really really need to know all this auto layout mumbo jumbo, but it's just good to like to use auto layouts when you are trying to design. So that's just by the wayside. So the next thing you want to do is to now add like a vertical padding and horizontal padding so 
vertical padding of 40 horizontal padding of 40 keep in mind that i said that what's it called the margin i'm using for this design the margin here margin here is actually 40 yeah so this arrow is actually what's it called uh so let me just draw the margin so you can actually be seeing why I'm, why I'm using the whole thing okay i think it should be here so yeah this is the margin so i'm adding a red internal padding just to like have that give you that margin space so that's some, just something I want to keep. so the next thing i want to do is just um, align this auto group let's call it a um, bottom bottom let's uh, also the the width now let's also increase it to 1440 which is the width of the like the desktop and um, frame 1440 so you want it to actually span the um, full dimension the full width of the frame and then you want to align bottom and then align left so you can see that it's actually sitting properly inside of the frame and then you have the margin that's also properly aligned to this particular line you're seeing here you can see so that's just um, what's it called this is just like layout um these are just layout and techniques to improve your workflow so that's just by the wayside then this arrows the space in between them i want to tame it so i think i want to make it 24. so keep in mind i'm actually using 24 because every like in design generally i think i just find that find that it's a good rule i've also learned it as i was from experience as well that it's a good rule to like space things not just space space and size things in multiples of four you can actually use multiples of eight but then four is just better because four gives you like more control and like more control and finesse to your items because it's like jumping from eight 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 it might actually like be too much and some items that you might want them smaller so typically smallest items should start from four but actually there's really no use case where i've actually made anything four pixels in weight or in height or anything so, but typically start from four then add four again that's eight then what's it called then 12 16 like that so just keep adding four four so if you where to make this arrow you can see that it's arrow now this um what's it called this uh arrow icon is actually 24 pixels so if i wanted if i wanted it wanted it to be smaller i would not go to i don't just choose one random figure let's say 19 i'll actually go to 20. so i'm minusing four so i'm just going to minus in four 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 or adding four 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 just to increase the size and like that so that's just something to keep in mind always space and size things in multiples of four the exception is in text text you can actually go for like size things in multiples of two 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 but then if it comes to any other item always size and space them in what always in multiples of four it's just like a good rule to follow and it also like it adds some consistency of consistency so that's just by the wayside so once you have this done i want to now make sure that this i want to let's say let me add a what's it called fill so you can see make it red so you can see also make this one feel red make it feel red so here yeah, now so you can see that I, I have an idea of the available space that i have to what's it called fit my images inside of so this is what you want to do just want to like what's it called size the image to take up the available white space between the elements so like this yeah so this is how your image is going to be but then you want to like have them as one 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 image so you want to just them um, i don't think there's really is ideally personally i prefer to go for i prefer to i don't just like if i want to add an image to my design i don't just draw an image I don't just draw a rectangle and just say, oh, let me just uh, five a rectangle of them, what's it called, 502 by 309 looks good. And I go with that. No, I actually start with an aspect, um, aspect ratio. So ideally, there are already aspect ratios that are there in the world for you to choose from. There's 16 by 9, there's 4 ratio 3, there's what's it called, um, tons of aspect ratios really. So if I wanted like a landscape, sorry, a portrait uh, aspect, um, a portrait image, I would probably go for a landscape, sorry, a portrait aspect ratio, which is, let's say, I think, uh, um four by three is 16 sorry it's a lance a portrait aspect so let's just draw a rectangle of i'm going to make the height four by three this is what i mean by four by three and then i'm just going to what's it called click and lock the constraint properties and then just size it up let's say i'm just going to size it four by three i think i'm doing this wrong i think it should be three by four three by four then lock it the height should be longer than the what's it called than the than the width so yeah so i can just like press times something or times 100 or so so you can like have 300 by 400 and so typically this is a four by three this is a an image that has like a four by three aspect ratio because i actually started with that four by three aspect them ratio. so i can just come here press in my design like make sure it's properly aligned to the what's it called to the bottom of this and then just scale it to hold hold shift and then drag from the edge scale it up like that so 
scale it up to just touch where this one where this image stops as well so yeah please try to zoom in and make sure you're having precise figures so it's just really important to for a very clean design so that's just by the way said so you might choose not to use an aspect ratio you might choose not to use an aspect ratio. that is it's entirely up to you but for me i prefer to use aspect ratio because like it's good when you are explaining to the developer you can't you don't have to tell him that oh the, the dimension is this and this you have you can say oh it is four by three what's it called a uh, four by three image or an image that comes in a four by three aspect ratio and the person just know that okay this is what you are actually this is the kind of image you can and um, what's it called need so that's just basically it. videos on youtube are typically a 16 by 9 aspect any video videos typically on any platform are typically 16 by 9 typically 16 by 9 so that's just by the wayside so once you have this once you like have a bunch more let's space them like 20 20 apart let's let's create a duplicate and then press auto layout auto layout them together and make the space let's say 20. so again you can see the space i'm using is 20 i'm not using like what's it called any random figure or 19 or 18. i'm actually using something that sits on that uh, what's it called four pixel sorry four four and um, whatever um sizing or spacing so that's just by the wayside so let's do 24 instead for posterity sake and just duplicate this one a bit more duplicate and that one again so yeah you have like these three what's it called just have like this um, stack of images that are just like stacking horizontally outside of the frame so that's just, just something you want to do as well and then you want to have the what's it called you want to have the left and right padding so you want to add the left and right padding to it you don't need the top and bottom part since the uh, what's it called the uh, nav bar already carries the bottom padding and this one already carries the bottom padding that's good and fine so you only need the left and right padding let's make the left and right padding 40 so you can just come here click on the other group the other group and then come here and just press 40 so it, it can have the same margin as the other one so you can now align this margin to the left you can also that the image starts from where this line this particular line we drew this margin line we drew starts from so that's how you want to structure so like this you already have the structure laid out so you can now start adding things so another thing you want to do you might also want to tame this <coughs> so that you can scroll so you can be able to apply scroll effect you might want to tame this um, what's it called this uh the what do you call this thing again the auto layout so let's just call this auto layout group let's call it images okay and then you want to tame the images to be 1440 as well which is the width of the desktop so that's just something you want to keep in mind so now we've done, we have the layout set up we can start creating our cards so we want to create the cards now to have this um, animated um, effect so it's just one card i'm going to create and then all the other cards are just going to like follow the same ideology or follow the same uh, what's it called system i don't need to even design the only thing i just i just probably be doing just changing the images and um, what's it called figma will do the rest so what i want to do now is just like drag one of the cards outside and then this is where the real work starts you want to um let's 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 first of all frame it so because it's actually like multiple frames for me to have this what's it called for me to have this uh text inside of um um layered over this image i had to like put everything inside of a frame so these are just frames inside of frames inside of frames so that's what, what i want to do first you want to have this image outside create brings image outside let me let's make it red so you can see it red and then let's add an image so we can actually still see what we're doing let's add an image on splash splash so yeah picking an image is really entirely up to you but since this one i'm trying to go for like a model and let's call it like a model site a site where you can actually source for models or just see models or stuff like that you want to be able to you want to actually use related images and also when using related images try to look, like use images that have like a particular aesthetic so a particular thing so you can have like this cohesive looking design so you can see that here it's all black and white black and white so i want to keep that maintained that's like if i <clears throat> i don't think it would be bad if i actually brought color like a colored image here but then to just break that aesthetics like it will just throw off the aesthetics that i'm trying to go for this black and white or this noir let me call it noir n o i r this noir and what's it called feel that i want to have to my design so that's just something i want i thought to mention when you're doing yours as well it's not only related to this design even like generally generally try to stick to one aesthetics to one style or one design language it's good so i want to search for something i want to search for black and white mode i can actually say for any model portraits and what's called let's search for model i can make it black and white black and white in figma but then i don't really want to go to that stress so let me just say for model model i'm going to change it to uh free because i like free stuff <laughs> so i'm going to also search the orientation to what's it called portrait so i can actually have what's it called very uh very uh tailored results so i also want to add black and white here although 
Unsplash does a terrible job at um, giving results, but let's add black and white. So yeah, you have this black and white language here. You can, like I said, you can actually choose a colored image and make it black and white instead of just just play with the slider options. But then I want to just look for. I don't want to have to stress myself to do that. So let's just look for black and white here. Let's choose baby zone as the base image. Well, let me look for that guy if I can find the guy. Just for some reason, I like his image. Just like the way the guy, like I like language the guy is bringing to that particular image. But then it might take time for us to find it. So let's just look for. Let's just look for anyone that's available. Let's just pick one that's available. So while the image is adding, let it finish, let it finish, let it finish. Okay, so we have our first image done. I think I don't really like this one because if you are ready to like add that particular, this transition, this trans, you will not really see like this black space since the background is mostly black as well. I don't really want to have that. So you can see that, you can see where uh, multiple picking of image comes into, you can see how uh, thinking goes into actually every image I'm actually picking. If I had to pick that pick this image, I will not really see this black effect the way I want to want anyone to notice it. So I want to pick an image that has like a different um, a lighter background. So this one does not. This particular image we've chosen will not work for this one. So let's go for something that has more contrast. I guess I call it contrast. Contrast is the word. So let's say um let's say this one. Let's say this one. Although personally, if I had time, I would probably still go into the and pick like I look for someone something that really what you call carries the language that I'm looking for. But let's for the sake of this design, let's just pick one and get on with it. So it's taking a while, thinking network problems and all of that. But yeah, so once the image has finished added, I don't think I want to click on any other thing so it doesn't like spoil the whole flow of the entire thing. But you know what? Let's just copy this uh, um, image. Let's copy this guy's image. There's no allow image stop us. So I can copy an image. I can just copy this image here by clicking on, can I click on the image and then press Control Alternate C. You're not going to see anything happen. It's actually not Control. I'm not pressing Control C now to copy. I'm going to copy properties. So I'm copying the image properties to paste in that other one. So I can just press Control Alternate C to copy the image properties and then come to my design. And let's just close on Osplash. It's not really doing a great job. So click on this image and press Control Alternate V. Yeah. So it's just going to paste the image properties here. The way it is now, so I, I do not need to like what you call copy the image and like fit it into this design. I just just copied and pasted, copy the properties and pasted here. So the properties is actually the person inside of the um, rectangle. So you just pasted it here. So I want to also name rectangle image in the layers panel. I'm only naming it because it's fine. It's a file I'm supposed to share. Ideally, you should actually name your layers. So uh, it's looking skewed because I cropped it there. So you can just come here to fix it to fix the skewed the skewed look. You can just click on the image here and then press fill so it's going to fill it properly it's going to like you can see it looks better compared to what it was looking like before so it looks better now so you can't after filling personally i still want to crop it because filling typically filling just um uses its own logic to just fill the, the entire background but then you can see that the guy's head is going off screen i want there to be some headroom so what i can do is just go to crop again and then now i can just move the image down a bit although i would have preferred if i didn't need to crop the image i would have preferred that but let's just go ahead with this. So you can see I have like this good image I like for this particular for the first image. So now I can start like creating all the creating what you call this um, components. I can start creating these components now and have it all, all um, um, setting all the prototype features and whatnot. So let's go to that design again. So the first thing I want to do is to frame the image, frame the image, frame the image. So frame selection here. So right click. And frame selection. I'll press Control Alternate G or con Command Shift G for using a Mac. So um, frame selection. And then call this one image uh, card frame. Let's call it card frame. So it has a more context on it. So call it card frame. Okay. Uh, then I want to start creating all the card elements. So what I what I mean by creating the card elements is all the things that will be inside of the card, which is the uh, text, this icon, and every other thing in between so now i can just come here add a text add a text here and just type what's called uh model name so i'm using generic name because i, act, I will actually like change it inside of a um, production or oh, let's let's use the guy's name actually let's call it um because he looks um he looks i think middle eastern he's middle eastern they call the people let's just call it let's call him ahmed ahmed farouk farouk Okay, or come Roshan. Roshan. Yeah, so let's call him Roshan. For some reason, yeah. So yeah, let's call him. Let's call him this. And you can see now here, this is the whole line, a uh, multi-core line height thing I'm talking about. Line height. 
the way the text is now, I don't like it. Because, so I don't, I don't just like it. I think it could be better by taming the, by what's it called, altering the line height. It can actually look better than going, because I feel like the line height is just too much. There's too much space between this first text and the second line. So it doesn't really look like that. Too, it doesn't look cohesive. I think that's the word. So I want to tame the line height. Before I do that, I want to actually scale it down a bit. So I think this one looks too big. So let me go and look at the other line. Okay, I think I, yeah, 56. So 56 for the, for the font size. So I'm still using this Libra, Libre Caslon. So 56, 56 for the font size, just to make it like really okay. So 56 for the font size. And then for the height, line height, I think I'm going to do, let's do 120%. There's really no right or wrong answer. You just try to reduce it. So I think once it, once it looks too, it still looks too much. I still want to like bring it closer together. So let's do 96%. 96 percent again if i divide 96 by 4 it's going to go so just that's just something to keep in mind everything i'm doing i'm doing i'm sizing things and scaling things in multiples reducing and increasing things in the multiples of four so just keep that in mind like i said the only thing that i only like don't don't really like the only time i really break that rule is when i'm sizing text for text sometimes i can actually just increase the multiples of two 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 because text sometimes four might be too much in here so that's just something to keep in mind so yeah, you have the name here, and then the next thing I want to create, the yes, ele element I want to create is like the what's it called? Is the uh, um, is the what's it called? The subtext. So this subtext that tells you the model height and then the weight. So let's just quickly do that as well. So I want to create that by clicking text tool and type height, height. Then let's just do five, six, four okay so let's just do this although this particular font i'm going to change to let's do inter i think for the others i use them i use a uh, new montana sorry new new something something i don't really remember the name again but let's just use inter inter is like a more accessible and easily uh, achievable font so let's use inter uh, i'm going to use a regular let me use light i think light yeah light and then i'm going to drop the size down to 18 ish i think 18 ish works yeah 18 ish works I think I also want to use regular instead of light. Okay, so like this, I have something going. I have something with the typography going. Again, I think light does not have enough contrast. The light, like the light weight, does not have enough contrast. So I want to use uh, what's it called? Sorry, the regular weight does not have. Um, it's too thick. So I want to use like light. So there's enough contrast between this first text and this other text as well. There's a whole, um, there's a whole uh, video on typography. If you want to like really get into that, there's a whole video by these guys. Let me see if I can find that video. Um, typography. Sorry, one second. Just so you know how to typography. Know how to use type. Yeah, this particular video. Like it helped me a lot. It's very basic. It's very very basic. But then helped me a lot with the uh, called with why I use um, typography and create contrast so let me just paste the link in the chat so you can get the access to it it's also going to be part of my video as well so you can watch it in your spare time so height 6.5 and then i'm just going to create another one again and call this one like duplicate it downwards and call this one weight okay and let's just do 75k i don't really know what weight this guy weighs but let's just do 65 kg i guess or no something like do 75 76 i guess 76 kg Sorry, it may not be correct, but let's just do this. So, yeah, let's just. Um, oh, the next thing I want to do is for the uh, line height. I, I, come, I want to come here for the line height as well. I don't think I really want to do anything there. It's fine. It's only fine the way it is. So, this is fine. I want to auto layout them together and make the space in between them. Let's do uh, 16. 16 again. 16 so, it falls on the 4 pixels, like that for multiple of 4 spacing. So, let's do 16. 16 works. So, once you have this done, you want to now auto layout this, um, what's it called? You want to auto layout the text. Okay, let's not do that first. Let's also create the, this icon here, which is this uh, particular icon here. So let's just do that. So the icon, where is my, just going to grab the, one of these texts. I don't want to have to do everything from scratch. Grab this one again, and then paste it here. So again, everything is going inside of the card frame. Everything I'm pasting, every, the image, the text, and everything is going inside of the card frame. So this one, I want to change the color to white, F -F 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 -F, white. Change the color to white. Yeah, so you have this, and then I want to rotate this. Uh, what's it called? This text, so it's actually pointing. Okay, I want to rotate it like this, and then I want to click on the what's it called? Click on the icons, the actual shapes that make up the icon, and then rotate it like uh, I think minus ten, minus sorry, thirty degree. So it's pointing 
pointing uh, angle, it's pointing diagonally. Yeah, yeah, that that's what pointing diagonally. So that's just what I want to do. I think, yeah, yeah. So it's pointing diagonally. So you want to have, have this diagonal pointing icon. You can actually still source for the icon from those icons. There's a diagonal like I am arrow there. So, but then I don't want to waste time. So I have this like this, and then I want to also scale the size down. I think the size. What did I use here just to be accurate? Fifty six as well. So let's use fifty six for the size. Okay, it's 50, already fifty six here. So let's just, let's use it like this, and then I want to auto layout them together, the text and this uh, and the icon to layout them together. This header um, name text, and then I want to align the auto layout here. You don't have to use auto layouts, but then it helps a lot. To use auto layout, it helps a lot. So you want to have this like, and then you want to do spacing as auto. Just click on the spacing between them and press space. So you're just going to set it to auto. You can see the spacing is auto. So that's something you want to do, and then you want to now um, auto layout these two items together. You want to auto layout the text together so this i'm um, sorry this um, group here let's call this one um uh, let's call it text let's call it top items top items okay let's call it um sub items okay so i want to um group the i want to frame the top items and the sub items together so just select them both of them and then press auto layout to add on to that, uh, what's it called to them, and then the spacing between them is 24, so that's good and fine. 24, so I don't need to adjust anything. I might need to adjust if I see that 24 is too small or it's too big. So, but for now, let's let's use it. So, the next thing I want to do after this is done is to now still auto out this thing again. Let's call let's call this thing card item, card them details, card them details. Okay, and then the next thing I want to do now is to still. Add a what's it called? Add an internal padding now. Add an um, internal padding to the item. So I want to add an internal padding of 24 or 32 rather. 32 30, and by the what's it called um, for the left and right padding and then 32 for the top, top and bottom. So you can see what I've done here now. So I've added like a padding around the item so it just looks good. So that's just something I want to do. I don't think I need a color for it because I don't want to block the image. That's not what I want. Do I want to block the image? I think I actually want. No, I do not want to block the image. So good and fine. So what you want to do next is just um align to the bottom align to the left as well you can see that it's not touching the edge of the what's it called it's not touching the edge of the, edge of the card of the card itself card frame itself so you want to actually stretch it to touch the edge of the card and then select these internal items select internal items click on them select them and then press set it to fill container so that the items can actually span the container fill the container so yeah you can see that everything here is 32 32 32 32 top bottom and left so that's just something you want to do as well so that's once we have this setup we actually are we've, we are almost done so what we just need to do is just the, like what's it called the before set the before and after frame how they are supposed to look another thing i forgot to mention is that this frame this particular card frame this particular image i still want to frame it again i still want to frame the image again yeah do i want to frame it? yeah i think i want to frame the image again yeah just so i can have there's this look i'm trying to go for so i'm going to frame this particular image the image as the side of the card frame i'm going to frame it again so give it a frame set it to frame selection so select the image and then press frame selection and then call this one image frame good and fine so once you have this setup like this i think we are actually almost done so the next thing we want to just do is just duplicate it and then once you start setting our before and after state and i think i also forgot to do was okay probably won't do that if add a fill color to the frame the card frame itself add a fill color so you don't see anything because it's actually an, obviously an image right but if I, if I take the image away you can see that it has a frame sorry it has a color so the card frame you want to add a color of black red sorry black zero 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 like that like that so yeah 100 okay so it has a frame a color collection of black so that's just something you want to do as well so you want to now you cannot duplicate it now duplicate it and then let's start setting it before so what you want to do first is you want to select both frames and then make sure clip content is turned on and then select the image frame as well the image frame as well select the image the image frame of both of them you can go inside and select the image frame turn clip content on so that any element that's going outside of the frame is hidden so you can go here as well do the same thing make sure it's done for both of them you can actually do it before duplicating so uh, I have that done. I also want to do it, the same thing here for the tech for the card details as well. Turn on clip content so that anything that's going outside the frame is what's it called is hidden. So once you have this done, 
the next thing I want to do now, I actually want to break something I've actually made because it's going to be easier for me to actually work with. Auto layout is kind of tricky. So what I want to do is come to this card details and remove the auto layout so that it doesn't have auto layout again. So I can now move the, because if I were to come inside the auto layout group and actually try to move items, you're going to I can't move them freely. I have to like move them with with sense. But then I don't really want to do that. I actually want to just move them without having having to think too much or do any rocket science. So I I want to remove the auto layout here and also here as well. Remove the auto layout here as well. So I can move the item. I can come inside now and move the image stuff around freely. So you can see it's disappearing because. This is where the frame, the card details frame stops and I'm clipping the content so that any item that goes outside of this boundary is going to be hidden. So that's the logic behind them doing most of this thing. So once you have this done, um, you want to now, uh, what's it called, move this frame to the bottom. Okay, you want to, first of all, uh, you want to shrink the height of the frame. You want to like just shrink it down. Before you shrink it down, so let's. This is the this is the before state. So this is meant to be the, be the before state. What I want to do is, I want to make the increase the spacing between items. I want to make the spacing. Let's say I can change from here to let's say 40, so that once it's coming into view in this after state, like in this like slight animation, like it comes from it just merges together. That's something something I just thought would be nice to have. Also, even this, this one as well, I want to rotate in this before state. Sorry, this before state. I want to rotate this arrow. I want to rotate it downward so that once I animate it, it actually rotate like once it's coming to it rotates to turn diagonal like this. So that's just something you want to do as well. Rotate it a bit. They can rotate it any how you want. I'm going to rotate mine by minus 120 degree. So you can rotate yours any how you want it, really. And then the next thing I want to do is to, like I said, increase the spacing between the elements, which is 32. Let's make 40. So it's actually a significant space amount of space and then i want to select all the items inside of this this for the name the top names and this stuff and then i want to move it to the bottom a bit just move it like, to the bottom a bit and then i want to just also move the card what's it called the entire card details i like, just shrink the heights hold con command or hold control while shrinking the height so that you nothing is done if i if i, if I were to leave control you can see that the image like the text is actually moving as well but then i don't want text i just want to just shrink the what's it called height a bit and then i want to move it outside of the frame so move the entire card details outside of the frame really it's up to you you can actually just move it out of the frame or just shrink it a bit so move it out of the frame you can see that it's actually outside of, the of this um, what's it called card details frame so you can't see it and then in this uh, after it's just going to come into view so once you have this setup you want to also here in this before in sorry in this after states the way it's supposed to work is that um what's it called the image is like um, cropped and then the what's it called the person's face comes into focus because I did I, I think in my own head I want you to like so let me use the word get intimate with the person you are trying to like um, what's it called hire or something like that so I did once you hover by it like the person's face comes so you can actually see the person's like face to face let me use that word face to face so yeah that's just the idea here and also it just like adds a bit of motion and interesting factor to the card so that's just um, something I just thought to mention as well so here you want to, to do that you want to now go to the image frame here in this in the after state you want to go to the image frame and then shrink the height to touch where the other where the card details frame stops so the card detail frame actually stops here so i have shrunk the height of the image frame while holding holding a what's it called again hold a sh um, command or control while shrinking the height so it doesn't tamper with it. if you don't hold command or control it's going to it might mess up your image the position of your image so you want to hold command or control and shrink the height to snap to where the what's it called where the card details stops so you can see that the card details stops here and then the image uh, what's it called frame also stops above it as well and then here what you want to do as well is to now increase the height of the what's it called increase the height of the image that's inside of the image frame so the image and this is the image i'm selecting i've selected the image and i can just press k on my keyboard and then press go to press k once you press k to like change it to the scale view I think I'll come here and scale this however I want to do 1.5. Let's do 1.5. So 1.5. And then move the image down a bit so that the person's face like is in focus. So this is just something you want to have. So like this, we have our before and after state setup. What you want to just do now is just like prototype how it should work now. So this is where we do how it works. So what you want to just do is just select both of them and then create a component. So not create create a component set. So click on this option here, select both of them, make sure both of them are selected, and then press this button here. This down button here like the down button beside this component button and go to create component set create component set so once you have this done like this now they are a component 
they can function as one element. You can just copy one and then you know that the other one is actually what's called a part of it as well. So like this, what you want to just do is prototype the components now. So we can, let's copy this one here, this, this before state, paste it in our design, paste to replace. So I can just copy this one here, press Ctrl C here, or copy, and then click on one of these elements, so one of these cards, and then press paste to replace. So it's just going to replace it. That's what you want to do. But then if I have to play the prototype, let's play the prototype and see, and hover over it, nothing is going to happen because I have not set it to do anything. So let's just give it a moment. So you can see, once I hover over it, there's nothing that's happening. I actually want to zoom into view, but then there's nothing happening because I've not set the, what's it called, I've not set the component. So that's what you want to do. You want to go the component now. So what you just do is just to come to the, comp the component and then select this first one and then go to prototype mode and then draw like this, uh, what's it called? Draw this, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, wire from this one to this other one and then set it to while hovering. And then set the what's it called set this thing this instant change to smart animate and then set the ease out easing or the whatever the easing to easy i think is that works fine and then 600 for the duration i think you can actually play around with it you can play around with these numbers you can play around with the what's it called with the prototyping with the easing you can choose easing and out or whatever you can choose anything really it's up to you but then i think easing just works best for the kind of uh, what's it called motion i'm trying to go for so let's see now, ideally the what's it called prototype to actually um work now so let's hover over it so you can see that it actually works you can see that it works you have the text that that's coming to view and then you also have everything just working really fine if you have small small issues with yours you can always go back to the emotical components don't don't talk about this one don't talk about this one go back to the components and try to edit things here and just make what you call changes and if you ever feel stuck feel free to reach out to me while you're trying to like work on it if you feel stuck reach out to me and i will help you out them um, with it so let's now remove this uh, emotical let's remove the fill all this in this section so let's remove the fill this red background remove the background so we can have our see our design the way it should actually look so you can see that once i hover over it the person's face comes into view the next thing i want to do now is i want to start creating component props i forgot to mention it component props. i should have done it from the beginning but ideally so that i can actually make this component like very very scalable because i want to create like multiple versions of it with different images but then i don't i don't have to like stress myself to start changing images changing text and everything without um higher multiple without component props so what i want to do now is i want to select this text here this text for the uh this person's name i want to now go to this option you can see this option here there's this button here beside the name make sure it's actually on prototype mode so select that the multiple this button here but before you do that make sure that you actually are doing it on both before and after states so i almost forgot so select this russian that's this name here and then you see this button this button here because ideally i want to select the one that's here as well but then i can't be digging through my components to select straight digging through my layers to select it so what, what i want to do is i want to select elements these elements in the other component the other component states as well so what i'm just do just click on the name and then you see this button here this uh uh what do you call it crosshair icon just click on it it's going to select this particular this same item in the before states you can't see it because it's obviously hidden but then it's going to select it so what you want to just do now is you want to set the you want to now add a component props a component props component property so what you just you just come to this section here where you have the name written out and then press this icon create text property and then you can just call you can call the property let's call it a, a model name so this property is actually a model name the model name and then the value value you can leave it as anything really you can put anything there because actually dummy value so create property so that's that for the model name so for here now the height let's go to the height now i'm going to press the same icon again this same select machine layers so it's going to select it on the other states in this other state as well i can now also press apply text property but instead of applying the model name i'm going to create a new property and call it um, height so this new property is going to be called height okay now next thing i want to do is also do the same thing for the width for the weight sorry weight as well so select matching express icon here i'm going to select the weight in this other section even though i had like 10 000, like 10, 10 of these what's it called 10 of these um uh, what's it called these images it's going to select all 10 of them in as long as they are the same it's going to select all 10 of them so i want to now select this the one here and also press this icon again apply text property i'm going to create a new property again and call it a um, wait yeah so that's that for that so like this now i can easily change 
the i can easily create this in a new one and then come here you can see that it already has like model name here you can see model name i can change the model name to um adams adams adam let's do adam and then we have what's it called enter sorry shift enter levine okay so here you, you might not see it happening but then let me go to prototype mode so you can see so you can see that the name has changed. I didn't have to dig through any what's it called, any layers to change the name. So the name here has changed because of that component property I originally created. So that's just something that you want to keep in mind as well while you're working. So that's just by the it's not by the wayside actually. It's actually very important. So in the height section, you can also change the height as well. So ideally I should have just changed, made the height number a props, but then you can change the height to let's say um let's do five uh, six okay and then the weight to uh Let's do the way to 66 kg. So like this now, I I just changed the values without having to dig through any multiple. Even the image is also going to be the same thing as well. But the image image works in a different way. So the image, what I can just do is that in this section here, this image here now, I can just come to click on. I can select, click into the uh, what's it called components. Select the image so you can see the image selected, and then I can change the image so I can go to unsplash. Let's run unsplash and search for a new model and add there so let's search for model black and white search for a new model oh boy no free orientation portrait so let's search for one that actually has like a decent enough background uh I think let's use a lady this time let's use a lady so let's use lady yeah so for some reason just really slow it's just actually but let's just give one second while it loads up and applies itself to the image so ideally once i just change this image here it's going to change in the before in the sorry in the after state as well because i have already set everything up in this component um, section so i don't need to go back to this component and start creating a component for each particular image you can just change the name and the image on the fly that's just something to keep in mind as well the image is taking time to add so i might just want to go here and copy one of my other images copy this lady's image control 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 alternate sorry control alternate c sorry i'm using mac command option c so if you're using uh, windows you know what to press so you can just come here still applying still applying we can't wait already so i can just come here and press con command or option v to paste the image here so the image might be skewed but then i can just come here and just then press fill set to fill and then come back set to crop as well so i think it's totally fine i think fill works fine for this image particular image so like this now it should work reflecting the before so let it just over by it so you can see that before and after still works perfectly fine so what you want to just do just like duplicate this for a bunch of a uh, multi for a bunch of um, images so let's do the same as well here uh let's do the same here as duplicate one more as well so i think what we want to do is um set this turn of people on content so we can actually see what's outside of it so let's just um take out these other ones and like add two more outside of the frame so let me just copy some other images to replace it with since let's copy this guy's own control control alternate c paste it here okay go there as well copy this guy's own Mm -hmm. so i think we just have one more to add one more to add one more one more so let me just see and do let me copy this other ladies one yeah there's a lady off screen so i let's see and paste it here as well yeah so like this we already have our image this image looks a bit skewed so i'm just going to just come here and uh, what's it called all all types to fill content although i want to still come back and to crop because it's cropping like a relevant part of our image face out so i want to come the only reason i just to change to crop is when i see that the what's it called some part of the um, relevant part of the image is being cropped out so i change to crop just so i can center my image the way i want so yeah like this every other thing works fine and i think we can preview now and everything should work so you can just go around and start changing all the names for all the all the guys just using this particular component prop so just click on this one Change it to um, Diam uh, uh, Ahmed. Okay. Change the height, change the weight. Change this guy to what's it called? Dave Jones. Okay. 
take note, I'm breaking, I'm making my, my names too. I'm actually making names, intentionally making names two lines. I'm actually splitting, like breaking the line out. So Sarah, Sarah, Tom, mm, Sarah. Okay. So that's, that's for that. So like this, I have all the components like with different elements. So the next thing I want to do is just to make it scroll. So I can scroll to that, scroll to the other end. And ideally, I could actually easily just apply a, what's it called, set this frame to, okay. I want to keep content again. I can set this frame to, uh, what do you call it? Set it to, go to press type, and then set it to overflow, scroll, horizontal, and then I could click and scroll. But me, I don't like that effect. I actually don't like the effect. Personally, I prefer, I want these buttons to be functional. I want these buttons to be functional. So what I want to do is I want to now create a second version of it, second version of it, and then this version, I want to just align the elements. Since they are not totally out, you just need for me to just press this button here. As you're just going to like scroll to the last one. So it's going to align the elements to the last one. Or you can use manually. You can actually use manual if you are not using auto like actually manually and make it scroll to the last one. So ideally, let's see the difference between the two images. So you can see what I'm talking about. So you can see this one has the elements stacking here, and then this one has these other elements pushed to the left. So that's just a multi called the change between both the uh, images so like this now the next thing to just do for the prototype is just to make this arrow be the trigger from this state to this same um, state so i want to set this uh, arrow this particular arrow here this left arrow drag it to this other screen and then set it to on click and then ease out i think i think let me see what i did for mine i think it was 800 yeah 800 yeah 800 ease out so and then this one as well set the arrow here this other left arrow here drag it to this screen to this screen and on click is out 800 good and fine so like this it should work perfectly fine i don't think any change should be the problem so let's just see press here you can see it scrolls and then i can try out this thing so like this we already have our what's it called our stuff working perfectly fine as it should and thankfully there were no challenges along the way so like this, i think we're done with this particular thing i've been able to like cover how to like create components and also component props for particular for this particular thing and also create this particular this um, interaction for this stuff so if you have any questions while you're trying to like recreate this particular thing feel free to reach out to me like i said i'm going to share this file so let me just press share and copy link and then paste in the chat so you can have just click on the link so you can be taking them um, to the file and you can open it anytime you want but then it's also going to be part of the video when i upload the video like tomorrow or so so with that, I think we've come to, to the end of today's um, design session. If you have any questions or challenges while you're trying to recreate this, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. I am always active and I will, <coughs> sorry, I will always um, what's it called, respond to messages when I can. So, yeah, thanks for coming, all those who came, and thanks for what's it called, your time. I really appreciate it. I look forward to doing this next week, and um, have a lovely weekend, everyone. Bye.